Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the flailing comic book industry. Uh, the comic book industry is not in a very good place. We've talked about this in multiple videos. A lot of mainstream media outlets are talking about how the comic book industry might not survive the shutdown. Right. And we've been documenting that. A lot of other YouTubers have been documenting that. You know, and a lot of comic book creators, though, they want to pretend like things are fine. They want to pretend like things are going to continue to go on as they have. And I think they're starting to realize that that is not going to be the case. Right. So now they're trying to unite to save comic shops because that's their main vehicle for getting their stuff out there. Right. But it's kind of weird to I, look. And I want to be very clear. Um, I am upset about what's happening in the comic shops. Yep. Okay, uh, I don't want anyone to lose their small business. Nope. Uh, and comic shops, unfortunately, are, have been collateral damage in all the bullshit going on in the comic book industry right. for years. And it's just, it's weird seeing the comic book industry scramble to try to build life rafts as the industry is literally sinking. Well, and let's be honest here. The reason a lot of these shops are, are, are in trouble and the reason a lot have gone out in the last few years prior to this event is because of bad choices made by the comic book companies and the fact that no one wants to buy their stuff. Yes. They're, these people are out blocking everybody who doesn't agree with their political opinions on Twitter. A lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of people that were creators in this event are ones who have blockchains and have blo a lot of people blocked. And a couple of them we looked, they did not, did not unblock people. Right. They're blocking customers. They've been, you know, very cavalier and um, very vocal about how everybody who doesn't agree with them is, you know, this, that, is their phobe. To me, this whole thing reeks of you going up to somebody, you beat them almost to death, and then you you, you give them a, a blood transfusion to try to keep them around a bit longer, and then go around, like, look, I saved them. I saved them. You're welcome. Never mind, you beat the shit out of them in the first place to cause the problem. Yeah, But it's... you're parading about how you're saving them. But you you caused the problem. Yeah, that and that's what, what is kind of, you know, I, I'm of two minds of this, because again, I do not want to see comic shops no, don't suffer. Either. But the comic shops have suffered at the hands of a lot of the people who are putting this thing together. How many shops already shut down because of not being able to sell? When they had that, that thing at New York, was it New York Comic Con, where the, where the retailers were yeah, were calling them out? In the hallway. Yes. They called Marvel out in the hallway. In the hallway, about yeah. the fact that they, they can't sell their books because the, the questionable, you know, directions and choices that were being made and a lot of the shops have gone under prior to this because of the bad you know decisions and choices from the comic book industry and bad behavior blockchains etc so now these some of these same people are out here going i'm gonna save it even yeah. though you caused it so this is this is what's going on. There's an auction out here. And again, I would like people to, to benefit financially. We're going to talk about this, but it is kind of weird to see it coming from some of the people who were uh, responsible for helping kill off right, the industry. So bid on the bid on the items from people who were not know what you're bidding on. Right. A large group of comic book creators are banding together to help support comic book retailers whose businesses have been disrupted by the pandemic. <laughs> it was disrupted before the pandemic. They're going to rewrite history and they're going to say that comics were fine a lot of other youtubers have been commenting on this too and it's not true there are years of documentation that the comic book industry was not fine yeah where's the benefit three five years ago when they started killing the shops with their choices you know right. there's no benefit then instead they attacked fans and they attacked youtubers and they kept saying oh no it's not true it's not going under it's not going under it's not going under and now now even before this happened it started going under mm. and now they're gonna blame it on this even yep. though it was already happening before this this was just a death knell type maneuver right so using the twitter hashtag uh because of course it's on twitter yeah because where else would they go because they you know yeah creators for comics more than 120 creators will be auctioning off comic books artwork and one of a kind experiences including chip zadarsky's naughty story ew. time starring I know, you you said told me this i was like ew i have to just creep me out an original erotic short story featuring you which <laughs> i will read to you sensually via zoom ew Opening bid, 40 bucks. Okay, I just can't. That's just nasty. All right. I hope uh, you have your shots. Yeah, right? That sounds like a Patreon thing. It does. Um, so the auctions will run from Wednesday through Monday and will benefit the Comic Book Industry Charitable Foundation, which is accepting applications from comic book shops and bookstores for emergency relief. Now, we don't know how it's going to be dispersed. No, they said it's supposed to be fair and equitable. But I do have to wonder if the ones who played ball and and, and blacklisted who they wanted are gonna are gonna get you know 
<coughs> Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Portland. Yeah. Um, now, I want to throw out there, because you're not going to hear about this uh, anywhere else except on YouTube, that uh, Gary from Nerdorotic, mm -hmm. right? Good guy. Uh, he used to own a comic shop mm -hmm. in San Francisco. He offered $1,000 to a shop that would write in and uh, tell, you know, give him the story. Like, here's what's going on, uh, which is cool. But no strings attached. You don't have to buy his erotic stories. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to <laughs> promote yourself via Twitter hashtag to get free promotion. You don't have to promote yourself. He's just like, from one former retailer to another, I will give you money. Well, I want to know right now when they're trying to get people to bid on this stuff, how many of them still have everybody blocked? Have all these people blocked? Have all these customers blocked? We're going to go down the list and I'm going to mention a couple people that have me blocked. But you were lucky enough that a lot of people didn't block you to begin with. No. Um, actually, some people who had me blocked before unblocked me when I complained about them blocking me in videos. Uh-huh. Uh, just to be like, oh, it wasn't us. Oh, oh. <laughs> so here's who's running this thing. Uh, Sam Humphreys, Brian Michael Bendis, Cami Garcia, Gwen DeBond, and uh, Phil Jimenez. Humphreys will be auctioning off how to break into comics by making your own comics. Which are video chat sessions with aspiring writers. Oh, Who's God. Bid on okay. That? Oh. How um, to break into comics anymore is know the right people and, and you know, be the right checkbox. Right. So, Jim Lee, he auctioned off a Batman drawing, got $17,000. Again, like, I'm not. Well, that's because it's Jim Lee. It's Jim Lee. And how many Jim Lees are there? I right? mean. And it's a band aid on a gaping stab wound. I'm not, again, I'm not minimizing anybody's sincere efforts to want to help comic book shops but basically where was the sincerity before this where the fuck were you for the last three to five years yeah where was the sincerity before this where when people when shop owners were telling you the stuff you're giving us isn't selling and it's it's running us under and you guys just kind of mocked them laughed about it blocked people and then were very cavalier in your behavior where was the sincerity then Right. Um, and I guess that's what I'm saying here. Because, again, it's like the comic book industry. We've seen this. There are lots of opportunities for self-promotion. Um, and again, Especially on Twitter. Especially on Twitter. And it, it just it sort of reminds me of, like, the comic book equivalent of Live Aid. Again, I hope shops get help. I do. But maybe shops could have weathered the storm better if, if the comic book industry hadn't made well, such stupid decisions. I love how it went from, you know, oh, these people are going to do these, uh, you know, codes to sell comic books and you know help the shops out and then when that was obviously not going to work it went from this idea this idea this idea to now okay we're just doing a benefit to raise money supposedly for comic shops it's live aid for comics pretty much you know? and i mean i'm I, I i i don't think that's a bad thing no i think that's a good thing that they're trying to help i just think it's to me it's just like it kind of rubs me the wrong way and the fact that the reason the comic shops were maybe not financially stable to begin with was because of the same people. Some of these same people, not all of them, obviously, but yeah. some of the same people. Yeah. Um, now, it's interesting. They, they mentioned, for some reason, they dragged Mark Ruffalo into this. He's not donating to this cause. As far as I know, he's he's uh, donating to Masks for America. And there was some talk about, you know, Donnie Cates was wondering why Hollywood wasn't saving comics. We're going to talk about Donnie Cates. He actually did something really cool. Uh, kind of wonder about the motivation, but he did something really cool. And we'll talk about him a little bit later. But um, the, the reality is Hollywood doesn't give a shit about the comic book industry. They care about the characters they can monetize for movies. And if Hollywood's going to save anyone, they're going to save themselves. Yeah, they're, they're not holding on either, guys. It's, so they're, they're struggling just as much. Uh, you know, the comics, they're, they're already ripe for falling under because they've already made it that way. Yeah, so it's every rat for themselves. But I mean, even local media outlets, uh, local news stations are picking up on this. Comic book industry crippled. Uh, by COVID. Now, here's the uh, here's the auction, the uh, creators for comics. I'll actually put a link to it in the description. I think we're probably safe to do that, hopefully. <laughs> we'll get flagged for that. But, um, you know, it goes through April 20th. And here's a list of people. And it's interesting because a lot of the names on here, there are, I want to be clear, there are some good people. There are. On this list. And, but there uh, are also some total A-hats on friends, this list, too. Yeah, we're friends with some of these people. Uh, there's Art Balbazar. He's a pretty good guy. Um, but going down the list here, some of these names, I'm like, hey, look, Chuck Wendig. Okay, so let's go out to Chuck. Oh, Chuck Wendig has me blocked. Ah, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Uh, so, so basically, a lot of people still have blockchains in effect. Yes. So you're allowed to, uh, to bid, you know, they want you to bid on their stuff as they've already blocked you. Right, right. And, um, you know, there are, again, it's a mixed bag. We have some really good people in there. And we have some other people that were 
frankly, drama queens mm -hmm. uh, that really got off on attacking fans, which wasn't the sole reason for the decline of the comic book industry, but sure as hell didn't help when you pushed a lot of readers well, away. I honestly think, and I've been saying this, I think the comic book industry and comic shops are already going to run into a problem because it's changing. The yeah. model is changing. It's been changing because of the internet. So they had that going you know, against them to begin with, but that's been going on for like 10 years. That yeah. wasn't a new issue. Um, they were still weathering it and they were still doing fine until they couldn't sell stuff. And then it really you know, took them under, and now we got coronavirus on top of not being able to sell the books to begin with. Yeah, and that's despite, you know, all these uh, comic book sites trying to be like, oh, look, the comic book industry is increasing. What they're doing, though, is they're rolling in sales of manga and graphic novels and crowdfunding to make it look like it's actually doing better. And those sales are actually the sales from Diamond to shops. We don't know what the sell through is, but given how many shops have gone out of business, chances are they're not actually selling through all the merchandise, right. you know? Um, but it's it's interesting. Again, I'll put a link out here. You guys There's can check it out. There's a lot of those names listed with nothing on it. They got added as they go. Is I that think that's what on? they're gonna okay, do. Okay, so so many a day is- Yeah, possibly. Hey, look, Matthew Modine's on here. So there, Hollywood, there you go. Hollywood's uh, jumping in here. But um, again, I'm not trying to, you know, because people are going to spin this and be like, you're just throwing shade at people trying to do no, something. No, we're not. Not at all. Uh, not at we're all. throwing shade at people who caused the issue in the first place. Right. Who are now trying to, quote unquote, do something so they can say they're, they're championing their heroes when they caused the problems to begin with. And I wonder how many shops, I wonder how many shops are going to be like, hey, thanks for that. You know, maybe if your books didn't suck or you didn't mm -hmm. attack my fans, maybe I would be in business now. Hey, Marvel. Um, well, it's like DC. Um, was it DC that was given 250000 Somebody gave him 250000 I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it was DC, but the people were like, okay, that's cool, but that's like, you know, 100, 100 bucks a shop or something. Yeah, well, you know, you know, and, you know here's the flip side. What if, you know, all those shops haven't been run out? So there would be how many shops left now, too, that would be trying to support? It's just, but they ran them out. So what about those people who lost their whole business already? Already. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the thing though, because the distribution is changing. It's going to be permanently. Where where the hell is Diamond? Literally, it's laid a bunch of people off. Where, but where is Diamond? Like Diamond, look, I'm going to be honest here. Diamond abandoned comic shops. Mm -hmm. They basically are like, you know, screw you guys. And they we're... took money from the, the the studios that they made them. Yeah, they took money from the publishers. They basically told the shops to go fend for themselves. The publishers to go fend for themselves, and they're just going to. They go... laid off a bunch of people. Yeah, they laid off a bunch of people, and they they've gone. You know, other than that, they've pretty much gone radio silent. And I'm like. You can't trust Diamond. No. You can't trust Diamond. I called this, I want to point out, I called this to you when I first met you and you tried to explain comics to me. I was like, how does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. Isn't that dangerous? Yes. Isn't that dumb? Well, that's just the way it is. That's what you kind of were like, well, I don't know. That's just how it's been done. And I'm like, but that's stupid. Uh, yeah, it was. When, uh, you know, Geeky and I first got together and uh, actually one of our first dates was at a comic convention. It, well, it was. Yeah, that was the second Pittsburgh. time I met you. Because the first time I met him, I drove to see him. I told him I was coming and he didn't believe me. And um, I showed up and, and met him and he didn't believe I was actually coming. But I also didn't have a choice. My mama sparkles and my sister kind of made me go. But um, in case our, this guy's a creep and he's not. Yeah, basically, they <laughs> wanted to make sure. But it didn't help either that he told my sister that he had a daughter my age and he had a, and he was a veteran with a metal plate in his head. And, <laughs> and, and then he was kidding. And I had no sense of humor was such that I was kidding. But to be fair, my sister did not know that that was his sense of humor. She didn't talk to him then. And so she was genuinely concerned that I was going to be in trouble and they wanted to make sure that they were there, rip off the bandaid early kind of thing. Well, as it turned out, he was, he, he was exactly who I thought he was. And, Unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and then our second time of meeting was at Pittsburgh Comic Con, which used to be where the Monroeville Convention Center is now. Yeah. And um, I met him there with his friend for that was our second date. That's when I got, you know, groped. I did. I did. Huh? No, I didn't grope you. No, but no, no, you didn't. That's the kicker. I didn't get groped by you. I got groped by somebody else. Buckethead. It Buckethead. was a, it was a guy dressed like the Red Hood. I didn't know he was. He had a bucket in his head. I'm like, it's Buckethead. He had a red, yeah, red bucket on his head. I made head. a mistake of wearing a mini skirt and heels because back then he didn't have the cosplayer girl no. that they did do now. It was like a girl showed up to these. And I'm sorry, people get take offense if you want. I don't care. This is the way it was. If girls showed up often, they were either booth babes or they were just dressed like in jeans and t-shirts like everybody else. And there weren't that many. Many of them. I'm sorry. There were no cosplayers but back then. Yeah. There weren't that many women there. So I shot up in a mini skirt and, and platform shoes and looking really cute with my hair all you know curled you and done up. Did you were I looked smoking? Damn hot. Anyway, I didn't hot. know any better. 
So <laughs> she, people thought I was a booth babe. They and, did. And I got, I got, I just saw somebody with a bucket on their head. And I'm like, oh, it's Buckethead. Because I didn't know comics. I mean, yeah. Other than the sheer mini comics. The Joker, care. before he was a Joker, he had a bucket on his head. And I, next thing I know, I'm being grabbed by this guy around the waist and bent sideways. And all these camera flashes are going off all around me. So apparently there's pictures of me somewhere. With a guy with a bucket on his head from Pittsburgh Comic Con. That was, what, 2001? Yeah, like almost 20 years ago, yeah. So, so there you go. And it's probably somebody that listens to us. Oh my god! I groped Geeky Sparkles! <laughs> but you'll never know, because I had a bucket on my head. And a couple of people on the list were there, too, and they hit on me, too, but I'm not going to name names. <laughs> but it was different back then. I mean, that's a whole other video sometime we should talk about. I mean, it is different. This is before the cosplayers came in. This is before... Uh, it was very different. It was very different. And there were, look, there were women there, but they were comic book readers. They weren't there to cosplay and get their pictures. No, taken. they weren't. They were there just as fans like everybody else. And they were dressed in jeans and t-shirts like everybody else. Unless you're a booth babe or you were a dummy who didn't know any better, um, like me. I was I was thinking, like, uh, you know, the Hooters girls were always there. Yeah. They always had the Hooters booth babe. The facts has how was then. And, that was you know, how. And there were was, girls yeah. there that were actual just readers and their fans. Yeah, yeah. Um, And they weren't there to get their picture taken, like some people do. Um, not all of them, but some do. And they, um, but there weren't that many. And I'm not going to lie. There weren't that many. And I'm sorry people don't want to hear that. And they're like fingers in their ears. That's not true. It's impossible. It's the truth. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, different time, uh, different time. But there were many, many opportunities before to at least, you know, stave off. I mean, I, yeah, a lot of businesses are going to be destroyed by this. You know, business models are going to be destroyed by this. But the ones that should be most affected should be, you know, travel related or outdoors or whatever. The comic book industry, frankly, should have been mostly immune to something like this. I mean, video games are gonna go on, uh, streaming's gonna mm -hmm. go on, animation's gonna go on, but because the distribution model went directly through freaking Diamond for so long, now here we are. Well, yeah, because I mean, comic shops could have still have kept open like that on curbside, or they could have done like, where they could have mailed you your, your pull list or something yeah. that it yeah. would have kept, everybody would have still been in the chain and it would have kept them at least somewhat solvent. But you know, because Diamond went under and because people aren't buying comics anymore and things like that, it, it caused them problems. And this whole thing, I'm not saying it could be avoided because you know, coronavirus is not something anybody could have seen coming. And it was going to shut down places anyway, but it could have been mitigated. Yeah, it could have been. Comics um, could have. And I, I think what what throws me about this whole thing is one, everybody knew you know relying heavily on Diamond was a problem. I called that twenty years ago, guys. And that's how we started that. Because <laughs> it wasn't even twenty years ago, I don't think. But you know. But I was trying to explain it to Gee, and she's like, I don't this understand. Is stupid. Yeah, it is stupid to an outsider, to somebody who's not into you know the direct market trying to explain it and you sit there and you look at them like that is literally the dumbest business model. It was. Model. I was like, How is it, what happens if they have issues? Well, I don't know. That's how it's done. That's how it's always done. It's just done. how it is. It's diamond. And I'm like, and? And? You know? <laughs> I mean, I don't have to change the subject because I was just like, I could get in trouble. I used to get in so much trouble on your comics board back then too because oh, yeah. I was an outsider coming in and I'd be like, but what about this? Oh, <gasps> how dare you? <laughs> you know your business model is completely screwed when you've got people come in uh, you got who, the art teacher coming in going, but wait. <laughs> but, and they're like, none of this makes any sense. And you're like, and you know, first you get mad, but then you take a step back and you're like, you know what? None of it does make sense. I know. It's all really stupid. And then, but it, really but it held out all this time though. So I'll give them that. I have to give them credit for that. It didn't make it this far. Uh, but I think this is it. Um, so anyway, yeah, there you go, guys. There's a bunch of people offering stuff, including uh, Chip. Zdarsky's I'm sorry, that's weird, dude. Creepy, creepy erotic story. <laughs> um, and Chuck Wendig, who has me blocked. So I'm not bidding on anything of Chuck Wendig's. Now, Donnie Cates, I'll, I'll give him props for this. Donnie Cates, is, there's been a lot of discussion about him lately uh, because he was the one who was calling for... Now, he is a, a pretty... I think he's like at the top tier of Marvel writers at this point. He writes Venom and, and some other stuff. Ghost Rider, I think he was doing Ghost Rider. And... Um, he was making the comment about Hollywood basically bailing out comics. Hollywood is trying to bail their own selves out. Yeah, and they can't they can't do it. Now, Donnie Cates, though, he called in to Ethan Van Skyver's show. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I listened to a couple minutes of it, and it was like the most freaking awkward conversation. Uh, he called. I, I don't know. Well, at least he tried to talk. Uh, yeah, I'll give him that. I mean, Hollywood's like to, to throw stuff that they don't actually want to talk about. It. Yeah, so I don't know exactly what the purpose of it was. It was a very weird thing. So it does, from my point of view, it does look like, um, you know, I well, 
Okay, I would like to think that there are going to be maybe some olive branches between the pros who spend all this time, you know, running down YouTubers and the YouTubers, but obviously there's going to be some you bad You can't blood. trust in olive branches, because I'm telling you, and I've said this before, we said it on the show, what's going on, this, these are the people who gatekept and threw yeah. everybody overboard to make sure they got their friends, their narrative, their pedestals, their platforms in, and then they didn't care what happened to those people. They blocked them, they told everybody else, they got them on lists and, and everything else, and then those people went out and made their own life rafts, and they were fine, and now they're in trouble, and they're trying to be like, oh, help us now that, you know, we don't know what we're doing, and you clearly weathered this, but you know damn well if you help them, they're just going to push you off your life raft and take that too. Yeah, because we've seen it before. We saw it with we web, saw it many times. Web personally. comics. Web comics. Oh my god, web comics. One. Oh my god. Um, you know what the most cutthroat thing I've ever seen with this same kind of attitude was? Disney comics. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to call it out like it was. Disney comics was the most cutthroat load of shit ever. And that's just the truth because Neon, and I don't care who Mick gets mad about this, but Neon was in there and there were these established factions, we'll call them. And he and, and 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 he was kind of like friends with everyone because he like he does he didn't like pick sides or and he kind of just got along with everybody. I just wanted to draw. He ducks. just wanted to draw ducks. He That's just wanted, what I wanted you know, to do. And people knew that IEW was gonna do comics for Disney, and people deliberately lied to his face and said that they didn't know anything that was going on. He had to go on his own because the factions already got themselves established. He had to go on his own and find a way in to make be able to even get to the covers he got to do because he was in there. He played ball. He was one of the people. He was in there ahead of some of the people who got to do things and then it was the most cutthroat load of shit and and backstabbing bs i've ever seen and it, you know guilty parties should feel guilty because it was really crappy what you did i'm sorry so who's laughing now yeah <laughs> but i'm just saying there was a <laughs> lot of back it was the disney comics it, it was very frankly the most backstabby and christian comics oh are my some of the most christian backstabby comics. bs things i've ever seen too i think it's just comics in general comics is a very know, some of the other comic things i didn't think it was so much there's a lot of cattiness web comics are very catty web comics uh, didn't used to be it didn't used to be it was actually when we first started doing web comics like late 2000s it was a pretty tight-knit community everybody kind of you know even though people had differing opinions even on twitter everybody was pretty civil and everything was pretty cool and then it just started to get very clickish and weird it was and here's the thing we learned too if you were somebody who was already a big deal when somebody entered web comics you were always respected if you beat them and you did better and you would start out at the same time but you did better and you've always treated them like a friend or whatever they get weird with you because you know how dare you you succeed yeah and people that already were successful in their eyes were always successful or always to be looked up to but if you were somebody who did better you were uh basically kicked out and, and ostracized and not spoken to because how dare you yeah there's a lot of weird well i think what happened is and i'll tell you because people are like how did comics get so weird because com the comic book industry in general you know there were factions on different clay and again it comes down to resources disney comics were a very niche thing uh and you had to be approved by disney lim there's limited number yeah i actually had to sign paperwork with with disney specifically to work on those comics and you're you're talking like less than a dozen people that probably are you know licensed by disney to be able to work on these books in the u.s so it's very cutthroat you know who gets to work on what and um so that's the kind of one thing but i think what happened was we had a lot of like webcomic people and that kind of attitude that clickish attitude come over into mainstream comics as they started pulling people in from tumblr yeah i agree and they know. brought their they brought their high school mentality with them i'm not saying there wasn't bad behavior before because there was we yeah, all know yeah. there was but it wasn't to the level uh, of today yeah it, and and so anyway so here we are so now we've got you know factions fighting each other on on youtube and Look, my thing is, and I, I've said before, I publicly said it. I said, I know who blocked me um, when we came out and we spoke out against uh, the situation with Mark Wade. Yeah, you know? even before that, when you innocently pointed out, Marvel's numbers are bad. This could be bad. And we didn't even know anything about this stuff. No, we didn't know there was a comics gate or any of this stuff. We, I didn't, was we, just we like, didn't even pay attention. We were busy doing our own things. We we're mostly doing like Disney website stuff. And that's how it crossed over because I was like, I was looking at Marvel's numbers. I'm like, holy crap, I haven't been paying attention, but Marvel is really not in a good place right now. Let's talk about this and on the Disney And that set us blog. off on blocked lists. It set you yeah. off. I mean, they don't. They don't, they don't block me for whatever reason. That set them off on block lists for you. And then as soon as we you know, came out um, on other things, uh, then it got worse. Yeah, my feeling on this is if, if you unfollowed me or blocked me, uh, and you I don't, knew us especially. And you knew us in person. And there were and that's what really hurt. There were people that we knew personally, people I've worked with that actually blocked me or unfollowed me. 
And because uh, other people said we were bad because of a chain. And they didn't want to lose their biscuit. And it's like, you've known me for how many? Some of them got their damn biscuit because of us. Some of them actually got their jobs because of us. And they still blocked me and unfollowed me. So I'm like, you know, screw you, bitches. I know I'm going to remember. And uh, I'm sorry. You know, if this ship's going down, there's only one life raft. And You're not getting is, on it. At the end of the day, they didn't get a biscuit again anyway. No, they didn't. Um, and now there's probably no biscuits. So. Well, that's it. The biscuit factory just blew up. And so now people, Not their biscuits. so now it's, uh, it's air biscuits. Yeah. Right. So everything's, everything's blown up. So now you've got people scrambling to try to find a life raft and you're going to, you're going to see more Marvel and DC people try to jump over into YouTube. You're going to see them. I've seen all kinds of people trying to start podcasts now. Mm -hmm. uh, Gail Simone tried to do a YouTube. God, it was, I couldn't, it hurt to listen to. I it mean, was really bad. I don't bad. know her. So I'm not going to either, either I, way. I'm not, yeah. But, um, I did try to listen to it and it was really I think I made like two minutes and I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. it I'm sorry. Was, yeah. There's a certain rhythm. It to, was very fake. Yeah. There's a certain, and they're going to find this. They're going to find that you can't, one, you can't just jump into YouTube. It's not as easy as you think it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, it took us years to figure it out. And I don't even think we have it oh, figured no, out Oh, no, not at all. We're still working on that. <laughs> We're still working on it. Um, but you, the one thing you have to be is you have to be genuine with people. You That's can't... That's all we do. We only cover things that we care about personally. People are like, why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover that? Well, if we don't have knowledge of it or we don't care about it, we're not going to. No. We, our YouTube is very personal. It's very us. It's what we like, what we're into. And I think and, it comes yeah. across because it's not like, you know, pulling teeth, you know, to, for us to cover it or for people to listen to it, hopefully. Um, but it, that's why it's a personal thing. So it comes through. And if you're just doing it because you're trying to just and come up with another revenue stream, you needed to have figured this out months prior to now. Yeah. And that's what's going on. They're like, oh shit, this, the, the boat is sinking, even though people were pointing out the rust holes for years. And, you know, I mean, there's been no shortage. Even You've been throwing people overboard who, who they didn't agree with your, because you're yelling mutiny. And then those people were necessary later. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So here we are. So Donnie Cates. We'll go back to Sorry, Donnie Cates. we went the wrong way around. We went the wrong like, way around. Would you shut up already? Yeah, so Donnie Cates, anyway, he paid off people's pool lists at this one uh, comic shop. Now, people were kind of calling Donnie Cates out because he was the one, you know, looking to Hollywood to be like, could you bail us out? And Hollywood's like, no. Um, well, that was because he honestly thought they would. Yeah. You know, I could have told him that they weren't going. Yeah. I mean, maybe this he's, for a while. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. And if Donnie Cates actually, and I don't know how many connections he has, if he's just a Marvel freelancer or he knows people on the Disney side, if he knew people on the Disney publishing side, he would be shocked to learn how little comic books actually mean mm -hmm. to the Walt Disney Company. It's a very eye-opening um, experience. Anyway, he paid off people's pool lists. Somebody, a couple people, I think, called him out on YouTube and were like, dude, you've probably got more money than most of these people. Why don't you do something? So but this maybe is so his he did. So, so he, he did. did do something. And I'll give him props for that. I'll give him props for that. So it turned out that it was Donny Cates who did this. He did it anonymously, um, which is interesting because it was actually the comic shop came out and said that he... So he tried, they should have respected that he wanted to stay anonymous. Yeah, I don't know the specifics, but basically he's like, just, you know, take the money you would have spent on the pool list and go spend it on some other other stuff. Um, but the, the interesting thing about this was maybe Rich Johnson's starting to come around too. There were comments. There were comments on this article yesterday. The first comment, take that CG errors. Let's see EVS do that. He blocked the comments. Rich Johnson yeah, shut the comments well, off. Rich Johnson, um, it's interesting to me. We talked about this before. He was kind of like you said, the Rita Skeeter of. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I say I like the inquiry. You said Rita Skeeter, which is actually a yeah. better analogy, um, of comics. And for years, people were just like, you know, oh god, here comes Rich Johnson. Um, it, you know, and now the, the last couple of years has been, well, he's, you know, now that he's taken their side, well, he's a bastion of journalistic, you know, knowledge and integrity, but. Um, Say what you will, you know, about it. It was nice that, you know, he did block comments, but you don't know what other comments were made. Uh, no, he just I probably didn't want to fight on the page. Well, no, and I think that that's showing again, that's maybe possibly showing a change in attitude now that, uh, you know, the industry is sort of collapsing. And actually, Rich Johnston has, I would say he's been more journalistic lately, but he also put out some, you know, hit pieces talking about like, well, Ethan Van Skyver's mean. It's like, well, does it matter if you Some think he's mean. Some of the things you posted before Rich have been pretty mean. Yeah, I'm does just, it, just it at this point, does it really matter who's mean to who? Because I think at this point people need to band together if they're trying to try to do something to change it. But they have to understand though, that coming on the other side of it, that might mean changes, like you might have to actually do books that sell. 
Yeah. Well, there, I think know, there are going to be fewer books. I, I mean, there's going to be. And the ones that are going to be left are the ones that actually sell. So you're not going to be able to just push your agendas, blockchain everybody, and, you know, act superior. Because I think it's going to bite you in the ass. And, it, it, like, you know, if you have an attitude problem and you're an issue, then in liability, they're going to stick with who aren't liabilities because they have to. Yeah, and Chuck Wendig's probably not paying off your pool list. Well, no, actually, Chuck Wendig will, but he'll ask if you're Republican first. No, no, he will, uh, but as long as you cover it in the news. As long as you cover it in the news, yeah. So, um, I don't know, guys. I think things are going to change big time, obviously. Uh, again, I don't want to I don't want to throw shade at anybody who is legitimately trying to help out comic shops. It's just like, this is everything that YouTubers have been talking about for years, and they've gotten so much shit for it. Yeah, I agree. So much shit for it. And I think maybe... If the industry somehow gets through this, maybe, maybe there will somehow possibly be more lessons uh, learned, lessons learned, mutual respect. I'd like to think that, but I don't believe it's going to happen I, or it's just going to crank it up to 11. I mean, the I, think, I think that the, the, the publishers that make it are going to have to sell products people want. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a lot of pressure, a lot of screaming, a lot of name calling, a lot of you're a bad person because you don't, you don't believe what I believe. I think it's, that's going to get, going to get cranked up. Um, as people desperately try to cling on to their positions, whether they earned them or not. Yeah, well, we're going to see this in media, though, too. I mean, you know, we talked about in the previous video, all the advertising revenue is drying up. You know, so your journalists are losing jobs daily. And a lot of the journalists who are easy cuts, if I were, I mean, look, if I were an editor at a site that hired a bunch of people, the easiest cuts for me would be like, who's made the most noise and is bringing the least to the table? Yep. Um, and causes us the most drama. It causes us drama. You're a very easy cut, and I can just bury it under, oh, we had to lay people off. Yeah, you they know? always say attitude determines altitude, and it, 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 I think it's true. I think that it needs to go back to that. You know, who deserves to be here, who has a positive attitude, who understands that their opinion isn't the only opinion, and you sometimes, you know, you need to work uh, for the greater good, and sometimes, you, you know, you can tell a story that's a good story and have diversity and not be like if people don't, you know, not just be diversity only and get mad at people for not liking it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping if nothing else out of this, you know, we see some actual change. Uh, in the industry if it survives. <laughs> uh, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah, finally. <laughs> so. Well, you were taking us down memory lane there back into the 2000s. You mentioned it first. I, I No, I mentioned I mentioned trying to explain the industry to no, you. No, you didn't. You said you met oh. our first date was first my official date. Well, that was our second date. I don't know. Somebody's going somebody's gonna to rewind this and be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, something will happen. Okay, we're going to wrap it up? Yep. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.